Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to work with Keda on Azure Kubernetes service and how to scale your first application. I recently had to do a POC for this at work and I found that there weren't any real good up-to-date tutorials for this and I had to figure it out by myself and there weren't any real step-by-step -step guides. So I figured I would create one and hopefully it will ease your journey as you are learning Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaling because it's, um, it's easier than it sounds. So I have prepared a demo, demo here on, uh, in a repo. The link will be down in the description. And in here, there are some Kubernetes resources and there is a readme file. So I'm opening the readme here and here it will show you, it will have all the commands that we need to do. And I also have a, a Kubernetes cluster deployed. It's an AKS cluster. And let's open up K9S here. Here there are no pods running except for cube system and the Postgres operator. I will get into that later. But the, that's all there is running. There are no applications running on here yet. And we are going to deploy an application from scratch and I'll show you how to do it. So if we read the readme, um, this will guide you to set up a simple application with auto scaling with Keda. And for that, we need to have an AKS cluster. Well, I already have one, but you can use this command to create one, or you can use this command to enable it on an existing cluster. It's actually fairly easy. So the Keda is now available as an official add-on before you could deploy it, but then you had to install it and maintain it yourself. But as it is an add-on, it will be automatically updated with your AKS upgrade. So it's really nice that uh, Microsoft is supporting that now, which uh, at the time of recording of this video is only a couple of months ago. So let's get started. Um, we are going to be setting up an, a small application that runs a database. Now, databases on Kubernetes it's not as difficult as you think. Don't worry, you can do this. This is not very uh, difficult at all. And we're already going to do a demo here. So don't be scared that we're going to use a database. But the thing is that Keda needs something to, to trigger the auto scaling, right? Okay. There are several different scalers. We can, we can look at that now. So there, there are uh, scalers that are driven by RabbitMQ, Loki, um, you can you can scale based on CPU, you can scale based on memory, Redis, but also Azure services such as Event Hubs or Log Analytics or Azure Pipelines. And uh, one of these scalers that is possible is also um, Postgres. So for the POC that I had to do at work, the use case was that it needed to scale based on a Postgres query. And that's what I chose um, for this demo as well. Because basically what it does is that you configure a query and that query returns a number. And if the number is higher than a certain number, then you are triggering the auto scaling. So that's how the Postgres scaler works. And that's what we are also going to be doing here today. So here is the command to install the EDB operator, the enterprise DB. Now it's already installed on this cluster, but I'm going to apply it anyway. So it's already unchanged, you, as you will see. But you just apply those and then you have the operator installed on the cluster. And this means that you can deploy the Postgres cluster custom resource. And then we can apply the database.yaml. So let's take a look in there. This is what the database.yaml looks like. First, we deploy a namespace called Keda POC or POC. I'll call it POC from now on. And here we have this custom resource called cluster. And this is going to simply deploy a database, Postgres database on our Kubernetes cluster. It will have three instances and it will have a storage size of 200 megabytes. So now we're ready to apply the database.yaml. I will select this and then I will navigate to my repo here. So you just clone this repo on your system and you cd into the Keda Postgres directory. And here you will have the database.yaml available. And then you just do kubectl apply f database.yaml. And now we are going to be deploying a database to our cluster. So if we open up K9S here, 
This is the tool that I use to keep track of my Kubernetes cluster. I am now in the kdapoc namespace and here we see that there is a pod starting to run with initdb and this is going to start up the database cluster. So this takes a few moments so in the meantime let's just take a look at the next step in the readme file. Um, we are going to be connecting to the database and then we're going to run some commands in the database. We are going to create some schemas and some tables. Don't worry, you don't have to understand what this all does. We are just setting up our application and uh, you don't have to know all the details. It's just so that we have something to base our scaling on. So our first database pod is up and running. So this means that the database cluster is actually running now. And that means that we can continue to with the next step. So let's go and do the kubectl exec it. So this means that we are going to execute a command on the pod. So let me just do the kubectl get pods. I have an alias for that kgp. So we are in the namespace and then I will do kubectl exec it. And now I'm in the database one container that you see here, or in the database one pod, I should say. In there, we are going to run this command psql, psql. So now I'm in connected with the Postgres CLI. And in there, I'm going to run C app. This means you connect to the database app as user Postgres. Now the name app is a default name that the EDB operator uses for the database name. So that's why it's called app. Now we are now logged into the app database and then we're going to run some commands to uh, set up the schema. And now that we have created some tables and a schema, we are going to run this command. So what does this do? It is a loop that will create a, 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 a sort of fake message queue. It will create 100 entries in our database and we're going to pretend this is a message queue. And because we are doing 100, this means that the length of the queue is going to be 100. And then we're going to configure Keda to scale our application if our message queue has a, has a length larger than one. So you have to sort of visualize a message queue where we have lots of jobs waiting for us and then we have only one pod running, right? Well, our application, the way we are setting it up, we want to make sure that when there's a lot of messages in the queue, then we need to scale out our application and then each pod can take the messages and do the work and, and process them and that will mean that the length of the queue is going to decrease and therefore our application is going to do the work, scale out, scale back down, and then um, it won't use any resources while it's on the downtime. This is the use case that I had at work and that is something that we have implemented. So let's run this. And now when we are going to verify this Postgres query, so now we are we are going to select the, um, the count from the message queue and now we see that we get returned a number of 100. So now our message queue is 100 messages long. That's all we need to configure for our database. And now, now that we have our database up and running, then we are going to get hold of the password for the database. So for that I'm going to just open up a second window here because in Oh, or I can do it in this one actually, because in this one, this is now our database pod. We are connected to the database pod and I need to keep that open for now. So I'm going to go to this window and I'm going to then copy this command and I'm going to be running that. Now what this does is that it takes the secret that was created by the database operator for our database and it takes out the the password for it. This is just a demo. You should never do this in production, of course. But then I'm going to be opening the, the deployment.yaml. This is our fake application. And here there is a password environment variable and we're just going to paste that in. 
like that. So if we are going, if we just take a quick look at the deployment, this is just a deployment with HTTPD front end. It is a very simple pod. It's it's nothing. It's just a pod to run something. It doesn't do anything really, but it's just to get, have something running on our cluster so we can pretend that we are scaling up and down a. Uh, application but it's very important that the pg password environment variable is set because Akeda is going to be using this in production you're going to be using a secrets operator in order to securely um, have your secrets available in your pods so now we have adjusted the deployment file and then we can apply the deployment file by running this command kubectl apply f deployment.yaml so let's do that i will go to my repo again because and then kda postgres here we go i'm in my repo here we have the deployment.yaml so i'm going to say kubectl apply deployment.yaml this means that now when we look in our um, namespace here, we see three pods with database and we have an HTTPD front end, right? So this is our deployment and this is our database cluster that's running. We have three pods with, data, with the database running in them. So that is the current state. And now, yeah, I actually include this um, example here in the readme but that is exactly what we saw just now and now we're ready to apply our scaled object so let's take a look what that looks like so i'm going to open kda.yaml and this is the scaled object so this is the the object that kda uses to determine what what it needs to scale and how it should scale it so this is a very simple one that i configured this you with the scale target ref you sh you tell it what it needs to target so the name for me is httpd front end and that's because the default target is a deployment i will get back to that later but if you look in the documentation you can see the default values for that so now you only need the name of the deployment the polling interval is how often kda is going to fire off our our uh, postgres query the cooldown period is how long it should wait with scaling down, I believe. The min replica count is the minimum of replicas that always needs to be running. In our case, it's going to be one because I always want to have one worker running. And the max replica count is the maximum it can take. Now the trigger is of type PostgreSQL. And here we have configured the username and password for the database. This is how the database can be reached. So we are using a service in the cluster to reach our database. So if I go to SVC here, here we see all of the services in this KDAPOC namespace. And one of them is KDAPOC database RW. And that this is KDAPOC database RW. And this is the namespace name. And we're saying this is a service on our local cluster. That's how the Kubernetes DNS works. We are going to do the we're going to use the postgres port the database name is app and this is the query that we are going to be uh, basing our scaling on so then we can just kubernetes apply f kda.yaml and now our scaled object is created so if i do k get scaled objects we see that we have a scaled object and we also see that it has a status of ready and it's active. So actually now we should see already some pods coming up in our cluster. So I go back, I go to my pods and here we go. We see that we have four pods. It's starting to scale out now. Look, there's all these containers or all these pods are going to be um, started up. So why is it doing this? Well, we configured Kada that if our message queue has a length larger than one, 
then we need to scale up and it's going to keep scaling up until it has reached the maximum number of replicas that we configured and this sort of simulates a situation that i described before where each worker is going to perform work on the queue and then the queue is going to be decreasing because we have more workers so now Keda is just scaling up and scaling up and if i go to my deployment I now see that it has 25 pods uh, ready. And now we have successfully scaled up our application with Keda. It's amazing. It, it, it is so cool to see this in action. And at work, I've been trying this with hundreds of pods. And, that actually, that you, and then you configure the node pool to also have auto scaling. So it will actually create more nodes. And that takes a little bit of time, but it's really cool to see that happening. So now, uh, our pods are doing the work. The message queue is decreasing. This is the, the pods are not actually influencing the message queue. This is just a demo. But now we're going to pretend that our message queue is now empty. So for that, we're going to delete all the messages with this command, delete from queue messages. And now 100 are deleted. And if I now do a select count, we will see that the count is zero. So now our our message queue is empty and this means because the number in our scaled object right if we go to our scaled object the target query value is one so if it's less than one then it should not scale anymore in fact it should go down to the min replicas now i found that this takes a while it takes takes a few minutes to um, scale down and if i go back to my pods now we will still see that there is a lot of pods um, running so i'm going to give that a little bit of time and now it has gotten some time so let's check back on our cluster and here we go our application has scaled down we have only one worker running and it's exactly what I, what we wanted and just for fun let's just uh, scale it up one more time so we're going to go back and then we're going to run this command again and then the queue is now 100 messages long again. And then, whoop, here we go. We see that the Keda is scaling up again. So this is really powerful. And uh, I hope this is a very quick way for you to get started, to sort of wrap your right mind around it and to get something physical going. And um, I was certainly missing this in my when I was learning Keda myself recently. Hopefully this has been useful to you. Please let me know in the comments what you think. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe because it really motivates me to keep going. All right, I wish you a good day and see you in the next video.